I'm getting a bit ahead of uh, where we are. At this point, we're still just talking about slopes of slopes of curves at single points. What I basically just wrote out here for you in general, this is the definition of what's called the derivative. The derivative is a function that is the slope of another function, the tangent line, right? If f of x equals x squared, like the focus of our next unit, which is the biggest unit we cover in the whole year, next couple of units really is something called the derivative. For this function, its derivative is what we just found, 2x, okay, 2x, because this is the slope of that curve anywhere on the curve. It's the rate of change of that. If this is the distance for something, if this is a distance function, its rate of change, this is the speed at any time. If you have a, a function that gives the distance of something, its derivative is going to give the speed of that thing. All the physics formulas you have, they're related this way, and we're going to see the connection, even though you may have just got given those formulas without seeing where they they come from. Okay, but really the way uh, the way these uh, this handout is put together, at this point I'm thinking we're just doing specific for one value. Okay, so that's why there's this in this definition over here. That's why there's uh, the slope of the curve at a point A, right? At a point A, this looks, you know, this is the this is the exact same expression we were just using here. Just make sure you realize it's pretty important to say it's the limit of that, right? Without that limit part of it, then then it's not the slope of the tangent line. It's the slope between two points. Okay, if you just have this part, you haven't pushed the two points together. All right. So if, again, if you have some picture here, this is A. Here's uh, A plus H. Letter A as opposed to X just meaning it's a specific value, like 3 and 3 plus a little bit. The H is just a little bit. That's slope. And then you're taking this point and pushing it closer together, right? This point is, is going down there, and you're ending up with them together, right? Can you uh, can you try and write out an expression for the slope of this curve? It's a different looking function. You're going to need different algebra to try and simplify it. But at the very least, I want you to be able to write the expression first. You're going to need kind of algebra with combining fractions and trying to simplify it somehow. But at least write the expression, right? As in slope equals limit of blah, 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 right? Start with that definition. I would... I would practice just writing out the definition f of x plus h, or you can call it f of a plus h since we're actually talking about a here. It doesn't matter though. f of a plus h minus f of a, or x. Then fill in the what you have, and then think about what algebra you can use to, to simplify it at all. Okay? So we have here 1 over a plus h minus 1 over a divided by h, right? Because it's the function is 1 over x, so f of a plus h is 1 over a plus h. And then you need to try and work with this expression and simplify it a little bit. If you have uh, two fractions and you're trying to subtract them, you've got to make a common denominator, right? So the algebra that you use is not always going to be the same. It's going to depend on the function you're working with. So this is what? A over A, A plus H minus A plus H over A, A plus H. The whole thing over H. If you'd rather, some people sometimes, instead of saying divided by H, they do this. They put that and they say times 1 over H. If that's easier for you to keep track of, it's entirely up to you. You can write it either way. And then if you're trying to simplify this, what do we have on the top there? We have a, yeah, a minus a minus h over that denominator there, right? A, a plus h. The whole thing over h. So we have negative h over, and you can 
You can multiply it out if you want. A squared plus AH times 1 over H. I'll put the divided by H over here just to make it easier. How does that help? What can we do now? Yeah, the, the, the H's are going to simplify now, right? Or divide out. So we have negative 1 over a squared plus a h, right? Maybe that should be off. At this point, can you put the zero in and simplify it? You can, right? Minus 1 over a squared plus a times zero, right? Negative 1 over a squared. That's the, that's the slope of that curve at any point. Really, we could have called, instead of A, you could have just left an X in there. If we had done this in general, it would be exactly the same, except for everywhere there's an A, you'd have an X. We would get an expression that says negative 1 over X squared. This expression gives you the slope anywhere of that curve. Okay? You could test it out if you don't believe me. Where does the slope equal negative a quarter? According to this, where, where would it be? Negative a quarter equals negative 1 over a squared, where should it be? <coughs> plus or minus 2, right? a squared equals 4, a is plus or minus 2. If you don't believe me, you can test it out with your calculator or whatever thing you're using for graphing. If you put that function in there now, 1 divided by x. Okay, 1 divided by x. Zoom, I'm going down to zoom decimal because that's going to be the best one to see what's happening here. There's 1 over x. Now, we don't want to know the value. This is going to give us the slope. There's actually a way to calculate the slope on here really quickly. One way is to, under the draw menu, see this draw if you happen to be using this calculator. There's a thing right here that says tangent. You can get it to draw the tangent where you want. And then you'll see the slope. So if we want to know the tangent at 2, like if we want to check if this is right with the calculator, I think you could just enter it in like this and then it draws a tangent line through 2. And it gives you the equation down below. Okay. Remember that this calculator, I wouldn't trust it past 4 or 5 decimal places on this. Really, this is just its pathetic calculations. Because <laughs> really, this 625, don't believe that. That's just, that's the best it can do. Really, it's exactly negative 0.25, negative a quarter. And then the y-intercept, of course. That's the equation of that line. If you want to check it, you notice I'm going to draw one other tangent at the other place, negative 2. Okay, so if you, if you draw a tangent at negative 2, okay, it draws that other tangent. They're actually parallel to the same slope, right? That thing has the same slope for opposite x value. All right. That's how you can check it on the calculator. If you want to clear off those lines, I think you either change the window or you can go back here and say clear draw and it'll clear the drawings and redraw the graph. That is useful to know, right? To check your answers graphically. Remember, the title of the textbook is Graphical Numerical Algebraic Calculus. You want to be able to check things. The other way you can do things on here is actually something, this will be kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, but on the calculate menu there's something that says dy dx. That actually gives you the slope. That's the derivative of the function. If you do that, it'll give you the slope. It won't draw the it won't draw the, the line, but it'll give you the it'll give you the slope if you put in two. It spits out just the slope. It tells you the derivative, which is the value of the slope at that point, but it doesn't draw the tangent line for you. So those two ways you can you can do that. All right. Um, a normal to a curve. I wanted to put this in here. You probably have used the word normal before in in physics. Let's stop this and start again here.